Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the By Words Show. I'm so glad you're here. I'm super excited. Today is going to be a really awesome episode because we have Jennifer Edward here with us today to talk about some really awesome stuff. I'm super excited. Um, Jennifer, for those who aren't familiar with you yet, would you just introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Jennifer, and I am um, an author, a writer, a speaker, and a Bible teacher, and I live um, just in the mountains of Colorado with my husband and my two kids, and um, I am a homeschool mom and a special needs mom, and um, I just have just a huge passion and deep deep fire inside of me to just share the gospel um, just with the world, so that that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> well, as you mentioned, you are a Bible teacher and that's kind of what we're going to be diving into today. Just this idea of like, how do we really learn to read the Bible, study the Bible, love the Bible, and then be able to take that truth and live it out. And that's something that I just, I really love that you exemplify, like you really live it out in everything you do. And so I'm so excited to hear from you and learn from you today. As we're getting started, would you just tell us kind of like what first sparked your interest to really dig into studying the Bible? Yeah, so I um, I have been a believer for as long as I can remember since I was a little kid. And so I have studied the Bible, um, you know, as, you know, you know, middle school, elementary school, high school, um, and then just like my early college years. Um, and everything was just kind of just my walk with the Lord. Um, I don't even know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Instagram was was around at the time, but um, it was definitely not something that I was going to like be sharing on the internet or with the world, um, like on a, you know, a digital level. Um, it was more so just like within community and in Bible studies and at church and things like that. And so um, I have always just been really passionate about learning. And I think one of the biggest things for me is as we study God's word, what we're really doing is we are getting to know God, right? And so we're, we're growing in our relationship with the Lord when we study his word. And so, um, after, um, my husband and I got married, um, we wanted to start a family and then, um, we kind of hit a roadblock. And so, um, we hit the infertility roadblock and, um, and so kind of walked through um, just a long um, several years and honestly still to this day just kind of walking that infertility road and so I just remember a moment um, as I was walking through that um, and I had I had looked back and I, I was praying and God just made it really clear that all of those prior years right all of those years of really just seeking him and just spending that time um, again, like not necessarily sharing it with like this online world, but just having that, that growing relationship with him, he made it really clear that, um, all of those prior things that he spoke to me and that he taught me and that I learned and just grew in the knowledge of him, um, was what was going to just carry me in that season. And so, um, really just it almost just like kind of put my blinders on and just my husband and I would just like fix their eyes on the Lord. Um, in that season, it was really, really hard. And then we ended up getting pregnant. And then, um, at 23 weeks, I had my son. Um, and so that just obviously rocked our world because just turned it upside down. Um, we spent six months in the NICU and it was a complete roller coaster. And that um, just was with us and saved him um, again and again and again. And so it was, again, in, I remember sitting in the NICU um, in, in one of the chairs in his room and just crying out to God and just asking him. And again, he just kept taking me back to that place of like, remember who I am, right? Remember that I'm so good. Remember that you're not alone. And so um, just really two big, like, pivotal moments in my life where um, God just had to remind me, like, as you're seeking me, like, I am still here. And and the reason why you're, you keep seeking me is not only to know me, but to understand and just grasp this this truth that he's always with us. And that as, as hard, and I talk about this a lot, you know, our terrains can be really rocky and gritty and really rugged. Um, but that doesn't mean that God is not with us, right? He's carrying us. And so um, after we took my son home, um, after about six months, I, um, I had always been writing and I journaled a lot. Like I could look back at just all kinds of journals that I've written and just seen God's goodness and seen his faithfulness. And so um, I remember I was talking to um, this, this girl who is just a close friend of mine. And she's like, um, she's like, 
hey, you know, she shared a couple things from Instagram as far as just like some resources of like just some hope and just encouragement and some different Bible studies. And um, I was like, I don't even know what Instagram is. Like, I'm like, what is this? So, um, and, and then she goes, then she like challenged me and was like, I also think that you need to like start sharing how good God is um, and, and just sharing what he's doing in your life and, and just share your testimony. And so at first I was like, I don't know about this, right? I just, I don't know about this. And so, um, and so I was like, you know, I just, I prayed about it and I really sat with it for a while. Um, and I, I remember, I think like one thing on Instagram I posted and, um, and then I had a couple conversations with people because, throughout just having like in-person conversations, you know, how, like you've gone through all this, like, how are you still saying that God is good? And so that's just like fire because I'm like, I can promise you that God is still good in the midst of these circumstances. Um, and so I had, I posted that one thing that I, you know, shared and, um, and then I just kind of just went with it and God just kept pouring, like kind of downloading things on, that he wanted, you know, to put on my heart to like then share with the world. And so it kind of just was just birthed out of, out of that, just sharing who God is and and just how good he is. That is so cool. And it's just so amazing to see that, like, because it really sounds like it was a natural progression, you know, like it was just very authentic, like organic from, from your story and just where you were at. Like, and I think that's so beautiful because I think as believers, we can overcomplicate this. Like we can overcomplicate studying the Bible. And I mean, it is very complex, but do you know what I mean? Like, I think sometimes we get this really big, overwhelming idea of what it means to like read the Bible and understand the Bible and to know God. But really you touched on this, like it's, it's about knowing him. It's about relationship. And then from there, like, how are we supposed to reach the world and tell the world about Jesus if we don't even really know him and know the truth, know his heart and what he says? And so it's just cool that as we read his word and get to know him and build that relationship, it really does start to come out in everything we do. And it's just, it's so cool because I think people crave that authenticity when it comes to faith. And so I love that you, that that's just been your story, just walking through the hard parts, the good parts, and just like sharing your journey, which is so cool. So is there something that you wish more women knew about studying the Bible, getting to know the word and getting to know God? Yeah. So, and I love what you just said. So I'm like, I have to like, I have to like jump off from that place. And that is that we really do have to know God, right? And, and and, And to be able to share who he is. And I think, um, and, and I have had this same, like, I've had these same thoughts and doubts and, um, just feelings as well, as far as, um, sometimes we feel like, okay, in order to share who God is, you know, we have, you know, we've, we have to go to seminary, we have to go to all these different, you know, have a PhD and all these different things. And so, you know, those things, those thoughts can back, right? Whatever the enemy can try to do to stop us from, from sharing who God is, right? And from, um, and, and I say this a lot, like, let's ignite these gospel fires. Let's not let them burn out. Um, and so I think for me, one of the biggest things is to know that we are going, like, it is a part of our life, right? When we start to really just relentlessly pursue the Lord, it does, it just becomes a part of our life, right? It just, he, like, and then we live out of that overflow. And so in everything that we do, whether, whether you're single, whether you have kids, whether you're married, you know, whatever stage of life you are in, I think the biggest thing is understanding that when we get to know God, right, when we are relentlessly seeking after him, um, and he is seeking after our hearts, right, he wants our hearts. And when we're doing that, it's out of the overflow that we live from that place, right? It sets our heart posture, um, and I think a lot of times, you know, sometimes the Bible can seem intimidating. You know, you read something and you're like, I don't even like some for some and I've had conversations like I don't even know where to start. Right. And I think what we just have to do is start. Right. Because if we think about, you know, any relationship that we have in our lives. Um, what do we do? Well, you know, we can, hey, you meet somebody for the first time, you go grab coffee, you go to lunch, you go to dinner, you invite them into your home, you have those personal connections. And that is exactly what we are doing when we are in the word and when we are praying God's word. And so 
I really just, um, I, I've almost like simplified it in the sense of, you know, as we study the Bible and as we are praying, um, what we're doing is we're really just getting to know God, right? And so, yes, there are so many different tools and resources that we can go to to further understand something. And I encourage it, right? Like I, you know, if there's a word in the Bible that you're just like, I don't understand this or this context, I really am not understanding. I like encourage you, like go and, and, and look and dig. And we can talk about a little bit of like specifics of that later, but I think the biggest thing is, is as we're reading to have this posture of coming to, to the Bible and to the word to understand that we're looking at who God is, right? Because there can be a lot said on one page, but really when we're focused on, okay, in, in what I just read, what did I learn about who God is? Um, and I think the more that we can just train ourselves and just have that rhythm as we come and open up the word, um, it kind of like breaks down those barriers of just being like, okay, I don't know how to study the Bible necessarily, you know, or whatever doubts or, you know, insecurities that, that we might have. Um, sometimes that could even be shame, right? Or guilt, um, you know, of sometimes, you know, you've been, if you haven't been in the word for a while, and that like almost like stops you from even coming to it. And so I think um, just to understand that the Bible is, it's a lot like his word is alive. His word is active and his word is for everyone. And his word is going to meet us wherever he needs it to meet us. Yeah, that is so good. And I think you touched on something that I have thought a lot about in my personal walk with the Lord and Bible study. And this, it's that idea of relationship versus discipline and like how the two work hand in hand, because I know there are times when it's like all about relationship and it, you're, it's like, you know, I pray, I, I worship, like I go to church, but I don't really study my Bible. And then there are some people who are like, I read my Bible every day, but it can lean towards a checklist mm-hmm. kind of thing and just part of the routine. And it's not really this mix of discipline and relationship. So have you experienced that? And if so, like, how do you find the balance and like, how, how do you think the two can complement each other? Well, yeah, so I think that the two, and and you said this, right? Like we, if we are just, you know, reading God's word, we're just reading our Bibles to just check it off of a list. Um, I think it goes back to this heart posture. I think it goes back to, are you, you know, are you, how, why are you reading it, right? Like, are you reading it? And so I think when we understand that as we are reading God's word, we're not just reading fluff, right? Like we're not, we are reading active living word. And so um, I think it comes back to, um, you know, to not make it this checklist and to understand that, you know, even if, and for me, like, and I'll I'll share a little bit more about this, but for me, um, definitely like I will, I I don't just like to skip around the Bible. Right. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, yes, you'll see a verse. And I think that's why um, I just encourage a lot of women to not necessarily like, let's just cherry pick a verse, right? Like actually, read one book of the Bible or honestly and Mm. for me a lot of times that's God will keep me in like a verse or like a passage of scripture for like I mean months he's done this right and I just Mm. cannot get out of one one spot and so um understanding that there's no rush right like we don't you know I am like for instance I'm I'm reading the Bible in a year that is what I like that is just my reading right that's just reading um and then there is time whether it's in this depending on you know morning and kids and all this stuff um then there's time to actually go in and really just soak in and you know and highlight and take notes and really dig deeper um Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that when I'm reading there are there are many times as I'm just reading um like one word will just pop off the page and so and I think too um to start our time as we're praying in prayer um to just ask the Lord right like ask him to speak to you ask him to reveal whatever it is that he needs Mm -hmm. Um, to be revealed in that day. And then I think I go back to understanding that one, this is a relationship. We're getting to know the Lord every single day. We're just growing deeper and deeper in that relationship. And then also understanding that when we are reading the word and when we are worshiping, like it's not about us, right? right? It's not about, you know, we might come 
to the word. We might come to prayer or come to worship um, from a place of, you know, discouragement or weariness or just heaviness, or maybe you're full of joy, right? And you want to, you want to just read about the joy that, that comes from the Lord, right? And- so uh, a lot of times, uh, as far as just like what my time with the Lord will look like, um, a priority that just I have had to make is to um, get up before the whole house is awake. Um, and so um, again, it's not perfect. I, it's never going to be perfect. Um, and it's not supposed to be, um, you know, there are nights where um, kids are up and so it might not happen. Right. And so I just want to preface that. Um, but to be able to just get up before everybody else and just spend time um, usually just praying a little bit and then um, reading God's word. Um, and then depending on how long that is, um, or how long I have, if, you know, a lot of times if one of my kiddos comes up and, you know, joins me on the couch, then I will just invite them in and, you know, they might read or just kind of sit there with me too. So that's another thing. A lot of times there's like this misconception, misconception that it has to be just quiet and silent. And although I do, um, obviously wake up earlier to get a little bit of that time just for the Lord and I, I think there's powerful and and just in that discipleship of your children um and your spouse you know just being a part of it as well so um but then i will because for me um like if you were to ask what's a what's a what would you do for your free time i i mean i would literally spread out bibles and my you know study notes and everything just and just dig deep that is just i love to just go verse by verse word by word and so um I do not have all day to do that, although I wish I did. Um, And so a lot of times that looks like in the afternoon, right? I will, you know, the Lord will, um, and and I can promise you that, you know, you, you might come to your Bible, you might read and, you know, whether the Lord, you know, reveals something that's like this word that pops off the page, you know, a lot of times that will happen. Um, and sometimes I'll kind of close my Bible and it's not. And then during the day, something will happen or come up. And he like brings me back to that verse that I didn't even, or a word that I was like, Oh, I just like kind of blew past that. I didn't even realize that. And then he'll like, he'll just make it really obvious of like, well, this is why I needed you to understand this today. Um, and so, but what I will usually do is, you know, in the afternoon or even sometimes in the evenings is when I will really spend that time. If God um, just highlighted, you know, a word or verse or passage, I'll just sit down and really dig deeper in, in that word um, mm-hmm. and understanding um, just that it's not, again, and we talked about this, it's not this checklist that we're, that we're checking off. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't like, and I think I said this before, you wouldn't, you know, meet up with a friend and have it be like a check, a box, let me check the box. I met with a friend or I, you know, had dinner with my family. Like, let me check that off. Like, that's not, that is not what relationship is, right? We're not just checking off boxes. And so whether we're, you know, praying or worshiping or, we're, you know, going to church and things like that. Um, and I've heard this said many times, right? Like we go to church on on Sunday, that's not like our one fill, right? The cup still needs to be filled the, the next six days, right? And so, mm-hmm. um, and so for me, it's just, it really is just, just like I would eat with my, you know, talk with my husband during the day or have dinner with my family in the evening. Like those are all things that are just, um, kind of just woven into my life. And you said this way back in the beginning that it's really just becomes part of, of who you are and your lifestyle and everything from that flows, right? The way our responses, our reactions, you know, how we are feeling. And, and the thing is too, and I, I got a lot of questions about this in the beginning when I started to share, um, just to about my testimony and my walk with the Lord and, and yeah, walking through wilderness seasons and, and walking through, you know, suffering and and really hard circumstances, but understanding that God is still good in those circumstances. And so even though we might, you know, have time in the word and we might have time in the word, that doesn't mean that the weariness is going to completely go away. Perhaps it will. Right. But what it, what it does do is it, it postures our heart to really just give it to God. And so it puts us in that place of, we have to depend on God, right? We don't have to carry, we get to just give it to God. And so at, when we can keep doing that, um, and just having that be a part of that relationship as, as we're seeking the Lord of understanding, I might be in this circumstance or feeling this way, um, but God is bigger and God is enough. And so um, I think 
that, that, those reminders have just helped me to just have it not be this, Hey, I'm going to check this off or I'm going to, you know, do this. And a lot of times too, especially in this, you know, online world of, of writing, um, I have had to, there, there's a balance because not everything that the, that the Lord speaks to me or I'm journaling or writing or praying through, or he reveals in scripture is not going on the internet. It might in two years from now, um, but there's also something really powerful about this hidden time with the Lord. Um, there's a book called Secrets of the Secret Place, and I love it. And there's another book that I have read. It's called Anonymous. Um, and it's just Jesus it talks about Jesus's hidden years. And wow. there is something really powerful um, that happens when God does reveal something or speak something to you, where you learn more about who he is and his word. Mm-hmm. And we live again in this world where, you know, we learn something and then we want to share it. And yeah. I think when it comes to our relationship with the Lord, um, it, it's just that balance, right? Because there are some things like there are messages, there are words that do need to be shared right away. And there are circumstances right. where, you know, God just like, you know, sh- I read something in the Bible and he's just like, you share this, right? And, and mm-hmm. like right away. And I've done that, but there are so many things I have have in journals and in my Bibles that have never and might not ever go out into the world, right? They're, you know, used to, you know, to just kind of use and, and speak through in my marriage or Mm -hmm. as I'm raising my kids or my family and things like that, or just friendships. And so, um, and even just to strangers, right? Like in person, um, you know, encounters. And so, um, that's something too, is I think, you know, it can be, we live in this like instant world. And so it can be really tempting to want to like, you learn something and you want to share it, but I just challenge women, um, as they are studying, because a lot of times, if you sit with that, like God reveals something so much more powerful, like his glory just comes to an even brighter light. Sometimes when we just sit with it. Um, and I think too, it's, it's praying about and praying and just asking God, like whenever it's like, when it's your timing for me to share something or, you know, speak something or reveal something, um, having just that posture again, um, I think really just helps with it not being this, you know, um, just like, you know, legalistic type of a thing as we're, as right. we're seeking the Lord. Yeah, that's so good. And I love that you brought that up because I, I have experienced that too. And I I just, I've noticed that how it's like, I just learned something. I want to tell everybody about it, but our time in the word is not just to come up with a caption to share or to find something that makes us feel better. And I mean, yes, there are so many good things in scripture that we can learn from to teach and to share, but that's not the heart of it. Like you said, it's about knowing God and no matter when, or if you ever share those things, it's more about just knowing him. So you're equipped for how to live. And, and I love how you said it could show up later in your day, or it could be a word that just sustains you through a season. But I just love so much that God just wants to speak to us. He wants to share with us and he wants us to be equipped for whatever's coming next in our day or whatever's coming next in our year or the seasons that are to come. And so there's just such a richness to reading his word for more than what can it do for me and how can I share with others? Um, I work at a church part-time right now and we were having a staff meeting a couple of weeks ago and one of our um, pastors was talking about how the word should fuel your work. You shouldn't just be reading the word if you are message planning or trying to find something to share, you know, like it should be the thing that is fueling it. And, um, oh, she said your walk will fuel your work. Your work Mm -hmm. isn't what will progress your, your walk, you know? And so I just have been thinking about these kinds of things. I'm like, man, this is just such a, I think a needed word right now where there's almost this pressure to share on social media. It's like, well, I want people to know that I'm reading my Bible or I want people that, you know, it's like, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be that way. Like, yes, there's a time and a place, but just keeping it sacred. Like you said, just just sitting with those things and then just letting God bring it up if there is a time to share. And that just makes it so special. And it just really, I think, keeps that relationship with him holy because the things that he wants to share with us are so deep and so rich that sometimes if we're rushing to get them out, we, we miss that part of it. But 
Oh, anyway. I love that. It, 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 it's so true. I mean, it really does. I mean, his word is what fuels and sustains us. And I think that's also why he's just made it like, just impressed it on my heart so deeply to, um, like I so deeply want women to be able to just study God's word and know God for themselves. Right. Because I can read a passage of scripture and I can teach on it. Right. And I can break it down, but there's so much more power if, you know, you and, and, and I'm not speaking specifically, specifically to you, but like you in general, right? Like then, then you going and reading that passage and praying through it and asking God to reveal whatever it is that he wants to speak. Right. Um, and so, and I, and I love what you said, because a lot of times um, I'm definitely, especially, you know, online ministry, you know, if you go to any marketing and I love marketing, right? I love business. I love marketing. But when you go to any of those, you know, people that kind of really specialize, they'll say, you know, you got to batch create content and this and that. And I have stood by this and I will stand by this. Like I, I, there, you probably will never see me like sit down and like batch write a whole bunch of stuff because, um, for me, everything like it's spirit led. Like mm -hmm. I, you know, when I'm in the word, yes, there might be something that, you know, kind of like I go down a rabbit hole and, and, you know, maybe the one thing I thought I was going to share, it actually turns out to be this other thing I'm going to share. And so it's completely spirit led. And I'm not, um, I, I just, I, I, I chuckle at it because I'm like, I don't think I'm going to ever batch content because it, it really is like what you said. I mean, it's his word is what's going to fuel me. And so me being in God's word every day and praying, um, and that's what just, I encourage women to do. Um, he'll give you whatever words that you need to help, you know, share to maybe give hope or, or help, you know, pour light on the Lord for somebody else's walk. Like he's going to give it to you. He's going to sustain you through it and you'll get that fuel. Um, but again, it's just, it's, it has to come. I feel like just with that relationship with him. So. Right. Yeah. And I, there have been times for me where I'll come to my Bible, I'll come to my quiet time with this agenda and it's like, okay, today, God, I want you to tell me about this, this, and this. And it's like, you know, like there are times when that's good and it can work if you need encouragement, but it's like, yeah. it's just that I feel like that just limits what God can do when we just give him space to speak and share his heart. Like you were saying. So yeah, totally relate to that. And kind of along those same lines, something that you talk about that I think is so powerful is this idea of trading perfection for purpose. And even in the way we study the Bible and walk out our faith, like, would you just speak to that? Like what that process has been like for you? Yeah. So, um, it kind of goes back to earlier what I shared a little bit about my story and, um, you know, as, you know, as a, as a kid, you know, or even just like, as you grow, as you're growing up, right. You think, okay, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, you know, go to school, do all those things, you know, and then I'm gonna hopefully prayerfully meet the person that God wants me to marry. And then, you know, in my mind, I always thought, okay, that's going to happen. God's going to do that. He's going to provide that. And then we're going to get married and we're going to have children and start this family. And for me, let, you know, the, the, having the children part really did not, I mean, there was a huge roadblock. Um, and so it didn't look like I thought it was going to look. And I struggled with that because I thought, well, that's, that's like the plan, right? That's, that's how it's supposed to go. And then when we did get pregnant, you know, um, I thought, okay, like we're finally pregnant and, um, you know, I'm going to have him, you know, full term. And then I had him at 23 weeks and now I have a special needs child. And so for me, I, um, I really had like the Lord had to just do this huge work in my heart and, um, just bring me to this place of just yielding it to him and just surrendering. Um, because I think, our world wants us to, to just believe and feel that um, when we have this, this perfection, whatever that perfection is, that, that our world wants to give us, that um, if we have anything less, like it's, we're just going to be in this like completely barren place. But in reality, I have learned that in these barren and desolate places that God, not the world, but God is what shows up just infinitely, right? He right. is there. Um, and he's in it. And so for me, I just, um, I remember I was, we were in the NICU with my son and I, um, 
I told my husband, I said, this is just really like our imperfect purpose. Like, um, and I, I've written and talked a lot about it um, over the years of just, this is just God's purpose in all these imperfections, his power is made perfect. Right. Um, and so for me, just understanding that, um, and even just my, honestly, my day to day life, right. Of, you know, whether that's, you know, taking the kids out to do something or going to a play date or, you know, going to the store, like, you know, as a special needs mom, like I have to understand that nothing is going to be perfect. And I know that God was definitely working in me because you know, I was definitely more of like a, you know, type A, like I have a plan. This is how it's going to go. And God's like, no, no, <laughs> let me show you, <laughs> which is where, um, I, um, he put like, like these words on my heart of just understanding that it's his plan, his path and his pace. And that he, I was reading scripture and he just brought those words to, to light to me. And so now it's like, literally I write it everywhere. And I remind myself like, Nope, this is not about my timing. It's about his pace. We're going to go at his pace in something. Right. Um, you know, I look back at years of just different therapies and stuff for my son, um, physical and occupational and speech. And I'm like, it's not in my timing. It's in God's timing. So we're going to go at God's pace, not mine, even though I would like to speed it up. Um, and then it's the same thing, right. Of just like what path we're taking every single day. Um, it's probably going to look different every single day. And that's okay. Um, and so I, I think just to understand that um, when we are looking to the Lord, and again, it almost, it just goes back to like, like when we have that foundation, we're living our lives from this foundation that is built upon the Lord and nothing else, um, then we can really start to just live out of that overflow of understanding. We have to depend on him, right? We have to go at his pace. We have to take his paths. Um, and look, there are going to be times when we want to, um, because we're, we're human, we are sinful and we live in a broken world. And so there's going to be many times where, um, we're like, nope, I'm going to take my path and God. And, and, um, you know, I've, I've written about this before and just shared is, you know, sometimes we think that, you know, if there's two doors and we go through, you know, door B, um, and that's maybe not the door that we thought God was, you know, kind of opening for us, but we go into that door. Um, there were many times where I thought, okay, is God, he's not going to be there, but that's not true, right? He's in, he's there. It's just, a matter of then him, you know, kind of repositioning, you know, our hearts and, and really seeking after our hearts in it. And so understanding that, you know, one thing or the other might happen, but he's not absent from that. Right. And so, um, because we are going to make wrong choices and we are going to, you know, not do things. We are, we are human, we are sinful. And, um, and then I think it goes back to then, you know, repentance and, um, and, and bringing it to God, um, and just surrendering what, you know, our desires are and, and exchanging that for what he desires. Yeah. I love that. And I think it kind of ties back to what you were talking about earlier, which is just being spirit led. And I think there's this perfect mixture, you know, like spending time in your Bible and studying and learning what the truth is. And then depending on him, it just kind of takes this pressure off from being perfect because if you are able to trust him, then it doesn't matter if you take the wrong step. I mean, obviously we want to pray and seek wisdom for every step, but even if we don't get it perfect, because we won't always, like a lot of the time we won't, we can trust that, like you said, he will redirect us and he will help us get back on track and use every step of the way to teach us and continue to grow us and draw us closer to him. Like, I love that, that every mistake, every bit of confusion or doubt or even fear and things we have, it's like all an opportunity. It's like an invitation to come back to him and get to know him more and trust him on a deeper level. And I just, I just love that. And so I think just your message about trading that idea of perfection, which it's just impossible. It's just exhausting for us. Yeah, it is to, exhausting. It, it is so like, it's so, it just wears us out. And so getting back to just leaning on him and trusting him for each day, like this idea of daily bread, just taking yeah. what you need, like he will be there and provide everything we need for every step every day um, is just so good and so helpful. And again, just goes back to simplifying what we have made super complicated and it didn't need to be. <laughs> And I think too, you know, cause you said, you know, trusting the Lord. And so like, is it always going to be easy? No, none of like, it's never, ever going to be easy. And it's right. not 
supposed to be. And I think when we can understand that it's actually not supposed to be easy and it might not be easy, right? But what it does is it shows us and it reveals more of who he is. And it really just like propels us like, okay, it's not easy. I need to get closer with him. Like that's like, right. We're just going to be drawn in closer and closer. We're just going to be, you know, just really like pushed under his wing because we're going, we're going to see, you will see that it is uncomfortable and it's not easy and it is hard. Um, and there is suffering and there is pain, but when we trust him, really, we're just, we're like propelled just to get closer, um, to him in it. So. Wow. I love that. That is so good, man. So (laughs) thinking towards practical, like if you were to walk somebody through this process of like learning to study the Bible, really getting that foundation of truth and purpose, like what would you say are some steps that you would recommend to take? Yeah. So, um, okay. So one of the things I would say is, um, pick a book of the Bible, right. Or if you want to start from beginning to end, if you want to read it chronologically, whatever plan, um, however, you want to read as far as, you know, picking a book, but I would say starting with reading one book, right. Cover to cover. And that is how I would kind of move through the Bible. Um, because when you do that, you can begin reading the Bible and begin reading that specific book of the Bible, understanding, uh, and these are things that I would look for is, you know, who wrote the book. So context, who, what, when, where, why, um, because a lot of times we read something and we can take, we can easily take it completely out of context, slap it on our, on our life and say, this applies to me. When in reality, this was about these people and this story, but what it will reveal to you, even though if it was, you know, obviously about a specific group of people, um, it's going, you're going to be, you're going to see who God is. Right. And so even though you're reading about somebody, you know, a story from the Bible, you're reading about who God is, you're encountering who God is. And so I would say, pick a book of the Bible and then know the context, right? Know who, what, when, where, why. Um, and then as you read it, um, for me specifically, I like to go <clears throat> verse by verse. Um, and so I will study, you know, a chunk of, um, of scripture at a time. And so, um, and then in doing that, you know, let's just say I I'm reading a book of the Bible and I'm going to read a whole chapter. I'm going to read, you know, whatever, 10, 10 verses, um, in those verses, I'll kind of just zoom in and see like the first question that I usually ask. Um, and I, and that's why, so I, um, I have these field notes and honestly, it's just been something that I've done for a long time. And I've gotten so many questions and I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this just so that everybody can use this system. And it's not something, you know, super hard or complicated, but I ask just some questions after I know the context of everything. And, and the first thing is, and I've said this a bunch today is just understanding like, who do I, what do I learn about who God is in this? Right. And whether you read one verse or a whole chapter or an entire book in one sitting, what did you learn about who God was in, in, in that passage? Um, and then the next part is what words. And so as I'm reading and as you read, um, you will see there'll be certain words or there'll be certain, um, ideas or thoughts that kind of just pop up and, and are just highlighted. And so take note of those, right. And so take notes, have a journal, have your Bible, write in your Bible, um, whatever tools you need, um, to do that, but make sure you're taking notes um and ask questions so if you don't understand something or you don't know what that word is circle it go back to it um so that you can really understand what the word is saying um and so the second part is what i what i'll do is you know what is god revealing in um what word or phrases is he revealing and then um i'll define those words i'll look up you know a definition and things like that um and then from there how does you know, if I just looked up a word and I learned the, let's just say, for instance, the Hebrew definition, and I learned the Hebrew definition of that word, okay, then I ask myself, how does now, knowing that definition, how does it help me further understand what I just read? Mm. And so really, you kind of go on this exploration, right? You're just on this exploration of like trying to understand, well, now that I know this little piece of information, how can I piece all of it together to just really fully understand it? Um, and then the last thing after I'm done um, really digging in, and that 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 second piece can really take a while um, or it, it can take however long you want it to take. Again, I could spend all day. Sometimes I have 20 minutes or an hour. Um, and if you run out of time, like 
you can go back to it the next day or that night or whatever that looks like for your life. Um, and then the last question that I really like to just dig into um, is more of like an application. And so what is what from what I just learned about who God is and what he just revealed in his word by understanding it a little bit better, how does that transform my heart? How does that transform my mind? So that then how am I going and living that out in my daily life? How does that change my thought pattern? How does that change maybe something that, um, you know, is I'm wrestling with in my heart? How does that change um, or help um, or give hope to a circumstance that I'm walking through? And so I would say overall, that's kind of just the study piece of, of how I dig into scripture. Um, and then this other component that I feel like goes hand in hand is praying God's word. Um, there have been many seasons where I didn't have, you know, I'll be honest, I didn't even know what to pray sometimes as I was walking through infertility um, or just being in the NICU or even just having my son with special needs. Sometimes you just don't have the words or sometimes a person in your life is going through something and you don't have the words, but God has given us his word. And so something that I practice doing um, because it helps um, also to, to etch his word in our heart, but then also to just have that as a tool in our tool belt, right? To just be equipped with God's word all the time. And so it helps us to memorize it when we pray God's word. And so I will pick um, sometimes from what I just read, or I will turn to a Psalm um, or another verse in the Bible that I have just come back to again and again. And I will write out a prayer using scripture. So sometimes I will literally just write out scripture and add nothing else. Um, and just, you know, dear God, and then the words, and then, you know, amen. Um, and then a lot of times it's really just kind of intertwining hit, you know, the, the scripture and then what God is putting on my heart, what I feel is just pressing on my heart or if somebody needs, you know, to be prayed for I'll, you know, I'll, you know, sometimes I'll, um, pray for my husband. Right. And so I'll, um, you know, kind of intertwine and just mention him in that prayer or family or friends, whoever I'm praying for, I try and pray for specific things each day in addition to just like, you know, praying God's word. And so, um, there's something really powerful when we can not only study God's word, but pray his word because he's given it to us, um, to do that. So, yes, I love that. Thank you. That is really helpful. I think just to break down the process, because like you said, in the beginning, it can be sometimes intimidating. Just where do I start? Like, what do I do? How do I find these resources and things? So yeah. thank you so much for breaking that down. So as we're wrapping up, is there anything that you would say to the woman who's just struggling right now to be intentional in her relationship with God? I would say pray. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds really simple. And I know that opening up your Bible right now might feel really intimidating, but sometimes um, really the best thing that we can do is just talk to God and it has to be nothing formal. Um, just tell him what's on your heart. Literally, like sometimes if you just give him what is on your heart, you will feel like you will feel the weight lifted. And if you don't feel it right then, you just keep talking to him. Um, and so that's what I would say. I mean, and then, um, you know, and then when you feel, depending on, you know, sometimes we, sometimes, many times we won't feel like opening God's word, right? We'll just, the, the heaviness or the burdens will just feel so heavy. But I just encourage you and I promise you that when you do, God is going to meet you there. And so if, if right now studying God's word or opening up his word right in this, in this second seems, you know, too overwhelming right now, then what I would do, what I would, you know, tell a friend to do is to just cry out to the Lord, right? Give it to God. And you might be surprised because he might tell you exactly where to go in his word. Um, he might give you a word. He might speak something to you. And then you will just have that fire to open up your Bible um, and to just, and to just seek him. And so, um, and then after you pray, I, I really would, I mean, I would go and open up your Bible and start in the Psalms. I mean, if you don't know where to start and you, um, and you need just, um, really a book of prayers, start in the Psalms. Um, and, and you will, you will be filled with hope and you will also see that you're not alone, that God is with you, um, 100% of the time. So, mm. Thank you so much. That is so good. Well, I mean, all of this has been so good. I just appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here and sharing your journey, your story, and what you've learned in the process and the way you equip women to really know the word and live it out. So thank you so much. Where can everybody connect with you and get more of this from here? 
Yeah. So on Instagram, so you can just go to um, Instagram's Jennifer Edward. It's my first and last name. And then um, also first and last name for my website, jenniferedward.com. Um, so yeah, send me a message. If you have questions or you want to talk through a passage or whatever, um, you can also um, send me an email. It's just jennifer at jenniferedward.com. But um, yeah, I would love, 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 love to connect with you and just walk and just learn about what you're learning about who God is. Yes. Well, you guys definitely need to go follow Jennifer. She has got nothing but amazing content to share what she's learning and just more tools and resources like this. So thank you so much again for being here. This has been so wonderful. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tune into another episode of the Byword Show. I love having you here and I'm so thankful for your support. Don't forget to share a screenshot of this episode to let me know you were here. I can't wait to talk again soon, but in the meantime, be sure to come hang out with me on Instagram and remember I am cheering you on.